Recently, a woman in her early 50s was teaching a lesson in front of a group of students and suddenly collapsed. In the room were some people that were trained in advanced life support and CPR, and they resuscitated and supported her, and then she was transferred to the hospital. I happened to be in the hospital when she came, and she went over to the CT scanner, and she was found on the CT scan to have subarachnoid hemorrhage. I recommended, while she was in the scanner, to get a CT angiogram to look at the vessels. And sure enough, she was found to have a cerebral aneurysm. So what is subarachnoid hemorrhage? And what are the consequences of a ruptured cerebral aneurysm? And how is it managed? We know from population data that about 3% of patients have a cerebral aneurysm. Only about six out of 100,000 patients per year present with subarachnoid hemorrhage or rupture of the aneurysm. Typical symptoms and signs of a ruptured aneurysm or subarachnoid hemorrhage would be a sudden onset, severe, worst headache of your life, but also a sudden onset, loss of consciousness or neurologic deficit of some sort. Now, it wouldn't be known if, for example, the problem was related to a ruptured aneurysm, maybe a stroke, maybe another kind of bleed in the head. But regardless, these kinds of symptoms belong in an emergency room where a full evaluation can be done in a, in a, in a uh, timely manner. As with this case, it's appropriate to do CPR and advanced care life support for patients during the process of getting them fully uh, evaluated. The initial step in evaluation for a sudden onset headache and other concerning signs and symptoms of a ruptured aneurysm is a CT scan on which you can see the blood. It's fairly obvious in most cases. The CT scan is about 99% sensitive for subarachnoid hemorrhage. If a CT shows subarachnoid hemorrhage, then we would do a CT angiogram to look for the aneurysm. Aneurysms uh, initially are managed with the advanced life support that we talked about and also blood pressure control. And then we want to get those patients into a comprehensive stroke center that deals specifically with management of subarachnoid hemorrhage because you want to have expert neurosurgeons, interventional proceduralists that can do coiling, neurointensivists, and of course, really good and experienced nursing care because these patients can get very, very sick. The first um, major thing in the management of a ruptured aneurysm is deciding how to secure the aneurysm. If the aneurysm re-bleeds, the mortality is about 67%. And the rate of re-bleeding in the first month is about 30%. So we want to secure the aneurysm from re-bleeding in the early stages of care. That is done by clipping or by coiling the aneurysm and an interdisciplinary team can make a decision on which treatment would be best. Patients that, are, that suffer a subarachnoid hemorrhage are very, very sick oftentimes and they are subject to several medical problems in the ICU during the first two or three weeks after the aneurysm ruptures. One problem is, is a, a form of cardiac failure that's from the um, stress response from the aneurysm. Patients can have neurogenic pulmonary edema or fluid on their lungs, again, from the stress response of the aneurysm. They can develop delayed cerebral ischemia, which is thought to be from dysfunction of the arteries supplying the blood with, or the brain with blood, and subsequent stroke. And that's one of the really complicated things to manage and treat. They can have electrolyte problems such as low sodium or other electrolyte abnormalities that need to be managed. They can develop hydrocephalus, which is excess fluid on the brain, also seizures, and a host of other things. And it involves a, 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 an experienced multidisciplinary team to identify and manage each of these problems. 
Subarachnoid hemorrhage is difficult for patients and it's also difficult for families. And as mentioned in our rounds this morning, it's really good to have nursing care and other providers counseling and supporting family members that are also dealing with a sudden change of health and a, a significant and serious medical problem with their loved one. So in summary, most patients don't ever have a ruptured cerebral aneurysm, but they do occur. And if a sudden onset headache or other serious and significant neurologic problem occurs, expert and timely emergency room um, diagnosis and management, securing the aneurysm if there's a subarachnoid hemorrhage, and then having a good multidisciplinary team in the ICU to manage all of the medical problems that occur as a consequence is the best way to ensure or hope for the, uh, a good outcome in this situation.